Hey guys, it's Dirty H here, and today I have a quick and simple tutorial on how to make a realistic map with a vanilla game. No mods. I will say I am by no means a professional map maker, but this is more or less just me sharing some of the tips I've picked up along the way. I also started playing this game on the PS4, so I feel the frustration from the console players. So, yep, no mods. This is completely vanilla. So, let's go. So the first thing you guys would do at this point is decide what type of map you want but for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to try and include different types of mountains and hills and also some beach and farm areas. Now looking at Google Earth can sometimes be the best inspiration here so often times I'll get up Google Earth and if we're not building anything particular off Google Earth the next step is to have a plan so this is what my plan is for this map. These are going to be rivers coming down here. They are going to intersect each other from these points here. And they are going to flow down to a coastline over in this far corner here. Just a little wee one where we can bring some harbours in. And the rest of these areas are going to be hills, ridges along here, over here. A couple up the top as well, leaving a flat area around the starting tile. So knowing where I want to place the rivers, the first thing I'll use is the slope tool in the terrain edit function and slope the terrain from where I want them to enter the edge of the map down to where I want them to flow to. And this doesn't have to be too much of an incline, I've probably exaggerated this a little bit too much here, but this helps the rivers flow right at the end and I find this much easier to do at the start rather than after we've put the mountains in. Well, once I've got all that terrain sloped, I put the brush on the biggest setting, which is 2000, and then just start to create where I want these hills. So these are just basic outlines at the moment. And the idea is to try and make it look like the rivers are flowing in valleys. So where the bottom of these ridges meet each other is where these rivers are going to flow along. So I carry on for a while putting these big ridges in with the large brush and then I can come back to outlining the rivers a little more. I use the brush on a smaller setting here and mark out just very quickly where I want these rivers. And because we've already put the slope in for these, this is very, very easy. We just run it where we want it and we have an instant river with some really good flow. I come back and detail these a bit more later on so don't worry about what it looks like at the moment. But now you'll see me carry on with the same technique over the other side of the map. So the brush is on 2000 and we're just pretty much just figuring out the orientation of where we want these hills very quickly. They just look like big lumps at the moment. Um, don't get caught up on it at the moment and try and overdo it. Just get these big lumps in and I'll show you what we can do next. So now I'll come back to those hills that we've just put in with the brush set to about 500 in size and the strength down to somewhere around 0.1 or 0.2 and then basically just start forming along the tops of them and trying to make something out of these. If you're lucky enough to have a second monitor, I would highly recommend having Google Earth up with just a few random hills for inspiration. Otherwise you could just try Google Earth on your phone in front of you for inspiration. I do recommend that because you'll be surprised how much different you build with that in front of you. But I guess what we're really trying to do here is just to find these ridges a little bit more in the way that they sort of flow. Also don't forget to do the opposite and put valleys and ridges in where they meet each other. So you want to try and make sure the hills do meet each other and form quite a sharp narrow valley between them as this is where it's most likely you'll find a river or a stream or the runoff for the hills. So it's also very tempting to get cute at this point and really start spending ages with the brush. I can tell you there is no point whatsoever. It feels like the brush is smaller at this point, but a 500 brush is still massive. You're actually not adding any detail at all and you'll make it harder for yourself in the long run if you overdo this step. So really just try and stick to detailing and sticking on the hills that you'd already put in with the larger brush and just trying to work with the terrain that's already there. 
And once we've done that and we're happy with it, we do exactly the same thing again, but with a smaller brush again. So I normally go for something around the 150 to 200 size here and just try and stick right onto the points that we've already defined. So at this point, you really want to look to just try and do the valleys and the ridges. And once you've done those with the same size brush, you can start flicking from the high point of the ridge down to the valley, down the sides of the hills. And don't worry too much about this. You'll see in future that it doesn't need to be perfect. But if you can do this properly and get the hang of just feathering the mouse button, you can create some pretty cool looking terrain. So once we've flicked over it with that smaller brush, I'll turn the brush to about a 300 and onto the smooth function and then just smooth over these hills very quickly to take out any really sharp jagged terrain. And then I'll quickly whip around and do this for the rest of the map. Now it's worth noting that these hills we've just made are low coastal hills and the next ones I'm going to make are going to be more extreme. I would call them probably more mountain ranges. Now we can introduce some water and this is really easy, it's just that corner of the map that we planned on. I have to raise a little bit more of the map up just so that it squeezes the sea down into that corner. And then when it comes to the rivers I place water cubes on the edge of the map at the top of our slopes and watch the water just trickle down into the little valleys that I've made. And making those rivers was really easy, we've got these natural valleys between our hills. I just made one of those a little bit deeper, made sure it was on our slope we made earlier and I've run it all the way to the coastline here. Now we can move on to doing some work on the beaches and I start with this bit here where it meets the mountain ranges over on the coastal side of the map and the first thing I do is I use the sand tool to mark out where I want the little beaches and then the areas in between where I haven't put the sand I turn into headlands so it sort of looks like the land is swelling out at those points. I recommend using our mate Google Earth again here to check that your beaches are realistic. Looking at Google Earth we can see that oftentimes we have a beach hidden in behind a little headlands like this here. And introducing the likes of rocks on those headlands like we'll do very shortly can enhance the realistic feel even further. Another thing you could look to introduce is cliff lines just on the edge of the sand. This sort of looks like the land comes along and erodes down onto the beach. And it's a good little trick to make your beaches look a little bit more interesting than just a flat beach that just rolls straight into the sea. And without adding anything else, that's already looking pretty good. Now I can start placing in some of the trees and I'm focusing on keeping them in the valleys here and it's worth noting I'm using all vanilla trees again. I've chosen a nice bushy green one and looking at a real life photo from Google Earth we can see that these are following the valleys these trees it's quite obvious not all of them not all the time but that's the majority of what's happening here so the brush is set to a medium size with full strength and I'm just going around and doing the main areas first so the areas that definitely need trees and then I come through a bit later on and add some more so even though we're following the valleys, try and be sporadic here, or as sporadic as you possibly can. You don't want just thick lines of the same size trees and pattern everywhere. And don't worry if you get the odd tree where you're not supposed to. Nothing's perfect, and the map certainly shouldn't be. So now we can move on to a smaller brush, but still at full strength with a slightly smaller tree. And we're going along and just really accentuating the edge of the tree, or the, the tree or forest line. And it's very important to vary your trees, the size, the colour, which is what we're doing here. And I recommend using a smaller one for the edge of the forests. And the smaller ones work especially well going higher up the hills. They give a really good scale. So when it comes to trees and the flatter parts of your map, I like to choose a really small dark tree and make these little sort of tree plots that look like this. And what this does is these look like streams without actually having to introduce any water sources at all. So I guess the main things to keep in mind if you're gonna put these little streams in your map is one, you really want them running out of your valleys, not off the ridges, and two, don't put them in a straight line. 
You want to make them look like they're following the terrain and they're a little bit wiggly and don't be afraid to have them intersecting and splitting and into two and then back into one and all that jazz. And um, I think you'll agree this adds a nice little touch to the map. Now when it comes to putting the farmland in, my general go-to involves mods. So this was brand new for me doing it vanilla, but I've kept it very simple, much like the rest of the map to be honest. But basically we just get the tree brush on single and then just make straight lines like this with little wee bushes. Make sure you don't do right around the edge of the paddocks. You can do the odd full side of a paddock here and there, but if you keep this sporadic, it looks much more realistic. And then we can use the resources function to make some of these paddocks look a different color. And you're just doing little square, different shaped paddocks here and there, keeping in line with the trees. So the last thing we look to do in this tutorial is come back and detail around the beach a little bit more. And again, vanilla props, we're using this vanilla grass here. I'm putting this in the valleys and around the edge of the sort of sand where it meets the bush. And then we're going to go through with some vanilla rocks, join them together, terrain conforming rocks and make it look like these are sort of rocky little bluffs. The vanilla rocks have a surprisingly good texture and they're really good on your PC so don't be afraid to slap them everywhere. And these rocks when they're in make a big difference so really consider putting these in your map guys. If you happen to have City Skylines on the PC, you can really take this map making to the next level. But for all of you stuck with the vanilla game, you've still got some mad options with creating realistic terrain in this game. I hope I've helped you guys and given you some tips. I've linked some other really good terrain videos and tutorials. That's in the description for this video, so please guys make your way there if you're still interested, and thank you for watching. So guys, please like the video if you enjoyed that or watched it this far. You're a bloody legend, and I hope to see you guys on my next video. See you later.